Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins Season Race. I'm Ferran Burgundy. I'll be providing the commentary for the match tonight here between Beast and Rave Tuba. Certainly, it should be a goodie. Both very experienced runners from everything that I've seen, and uh, we will certainly see how this seed fares out here. As we've already seen something uh, a little earlier today that never thought we'd see here with the uh, the screen wrap. So just uh, just when you think you've seen it all, something else changes here. So for those not too familiar with Super Mario Land 2, the object is to collect, as the title indicates, the six golden coins, which will open the door to Wario's castle, and then it's up to Mario to defeat Wario from there. And our two runners will be looking to do that as quickly as possible, beating six bosses along the way. Now, what's randomized here? Just about everything. The levels, uh, the bosses, the enemies, the power-ups, uh, the whether or not the levels or zones auto-scroll, the music is going to be randomized, the physics, meaning whether you can jump normally, uh, whether you have the moon physics, which causes for a little bit slower and higher hovering type jumping, or the space physics, where you can pretty much float and fly at your leisure. Also, there are a few levels that have dual exits. They're known as the split zones. Uh, those can be swapped, so it may or may not take you to the secret area, which is what our racers do not want, uh, or it can move them along to getting closer to that particular zone's boss. So we should be underway in just a matter of a moment or two here, and we'll see how things are going to start and shake up in this particular seed. Things certainly go fast and furious around here, and we've also got some more great action coming your way that we'll talk a lot about a little bit later on the Randomania networks, among the Randomania networks, as we've got this great matchup here on Randomania 2 and another couple of interesting games coming your way later tonight, including a Super Mario Brothers 3 Randomizer Weekly in about an hour from now over on Randomania 1, and we're about to get things started, and Beast is going to get things rolling here, and well, we'll get things synced up in a moment, but the opening level well, looks to be the start level, interestingly enough. Is this even randomized? Well, it's hard to say early on, but uh, sometimes that does happen as, uh, as these things roll out. It's just one of those 1 in 32 likelihoods. So this is the kind of introductory level, and both of our runners with the uh, the Fire Flower, although Beast losing his, but going back over and grabbing the Carrot, which gives him the Bunny Ears, allowing him to flutter and float over the top of just about everything, and kind of hanging and hovering in the air there. It'll give a pretty easy passage through the rest of the level, and Beast is going to take a slight early lead, but only a matter of a second or two. So now both of our runners are going to head over to the left to start in Tree Zone, and Tree Zone 1 this time around. Oh, it looks like we've got the graveyard. That's going to be Pumpkin Zone 1. So a few of uh, those sword-born hockey masks, also a vampire or two some bats, and some other spooky things to try to avoid. Nothing like thinking about Halloween here in mid-April. Pretty even uh, across the board. Both of our runners uh, very expertly making their way through. Beast using that hover to get a, get a slight advantage, or at least maintain it thus far. But Rave Tuba just using the Fire Flower to take everything out in its path, and again, about a two-second differential, as now we have our first split zone coming up here. Tree 2 this time around is going to be Macro Zone 1. So there are two exits, one that is the standard exit, and one that is the secret exit that's going to require a little extra effort or a different direction depending on the particular zone. Now in this case, 
I believe they're going to need a fire flower to take the pipe that leads to the upper secret exit. So depending on what power-ups come along the way, that could give Rave Tuba an advantage if the secret exit is the ideal way to go to advance to the upper part of the tree. Now the other less than desirable exit, that is going to send them to a secret zone off to the side, and that is what our racers do not want. So Rave Tuba heading through at a slightly quicker clip, both navigating the moon physics here in this particular level, so they're jumping and reactability a little bit different than they're used to. So Rave Tube is going to head on up. And Beast also getting the Fire Flower, so they're both going to take the same direction, and we'll see if it's the right direction, and it is. And Tree Zone is going to be Mario Zone 3. Ooh, as Rave Tuba getting a one up, but losing a little bit of health along the way in doing so. And meanwhile, Beast heading to the right instead. And it looks like he's going to get the Pumpkin Secret Zone. So a slight diversion of paths, and oh, Rave Tuba just clipping the clipping the spike. Now Beast. Making the better decision is that was a shorter level, the Pumpkin Secret level, and is already on Tree Zone 5, which is going to be the Space Zone 2. And it looks like it has the traditional space physics in this, so Beast is going to hover around the top and avoid some of those not-so-happy stars. Making his way through. This is where most people are used to hearing the star song, but with the different music randomized throughout the game, as much as you love to hear it here, not so much in this case. Now they're looking to head to the end here, and we'll see which of the six bosses our racers will face. It'll either be the angry mama bird in the nest, that's the standard boss for the tree zone. It could be Tatanga, which is the space zone boss. It could be the sewer rat, which you usually see in macro. It could be the witch, which is the boss of the pumpkin zone. Or it could be the three little pigs, which is from Mario zone, but it looks to be the octopus, which is the boss of the turtle zone. And just that quickly, Beast taking out the octopus. And is going to get the coin at 546. And take a slight early lead here, but maybe all of about 20, 30 seconds. And one wrong decision can certainly swap that out very quickly. As now the hippo level is going to be tree zone 2 which is also a split level, so two different exits. One of which will take them to the space zone, the other will send them over to macro zone. So not necessarily a bad choice either way, it's just a matter of which way you're looking to go, and we'll see what Rave is going to do as well. So the physics look to be standard in this one. The race that I called earlier today had this as an auto-scroll, which had created that interesting screen wrap that we saw from another one of our racers, Liam. And it looks as though Beast takes the correct option to space and is going to see the space zone, which is Turtle Zone 2, the submarine. And Rave Tube are going to make his way to the secret exit. 
and is also going to head to Space Zone. So now it's a matter of running the gauntlet here. A lot of our runners tend to take the shorter path or quicker path, which is actually to the secret land, and ooh, Beast taking a death in the gauntlet, as it's known. It's a uh, pathway with a bunch of enemies, but with the enemies being randomized, it certainly makes for a challenge, and Rave Tuba intentionally becoming small Mario to be able to fit through that passageway, but the danger to that is having to face the gauntlet of all these different enemies, and you don't know what they're going to be, one hit, and you're going to fall just as Rave Tuba did there, having the same fate that Beast did just a moment ago. Yeah, identical deaths at slightly different times, so I guess there would be fraternal deaths in that case. Oh, so Rave going over to the left to pick up a power-up, and Beast makes his way through the gauntlet. And we see that it leads to the secret so that is not the desired one. And we saw for a split second that that looked to have been the auto-scrolling miscellaneous overworld level or the mole for short because it's uh, like a benign uh, addition kind of like what you have on the skin there and it's a benign level that is really just kind of there so Rave Tuba is going to make his way through the gauntlet oh but he takes another death getting sandwiched by the shark and the bullet but persistently heading right back on in. As Beast dipping down to the bottom. Goes on over, grabs a an invincibility star. Goes up and grabs the midpoint bell with the different levels, you'll see a bell midway through the stage, and if our runners happen to expire before making it to the end, that will be where they restart. It's almost like the midpoint tape that you'd see in Super Mario World, for example. And Late Learner noting in chat, yes, it is uh, another mean gauntlet. But both of our runners recognizing and heading into the other direction taking the long way to the standard exit. And Beast is going to head on there, and let's see what Space Zone 2 brings. Well, it is Mario Zone 4, known for those... Uh, Copyright recognized building blocks. That'll keep me out of trouble, right? And spinning his way to a one up is Beast, already up to nine lives. Rave, meanwhile, picking up an invincibility star. Going through the bullet bill hurdles. Oh, and thought he held onto it just a split second too long. And another life for Beast. And in the boss zone, it's going to be the sewer rat. Normally seen in macro zone 4. And a couple of fireballs later. And that's it for the rat. And that is going to be the second coin for Beast. And that'll be at 11.50. So the differential, not too terribly much. Again, only uh, the difference between the two once they got their first coins was only about 23 seconds. And it might be a little bit more than that, but not much. As now we've got Pumpkin 2 here in Macro Zone 1, another split level. 
So yes, the differential of uh, 30 seconds, so the lead extended only by 7 seconds, which I say only and it's not that, uh, not that, not that uh, different. All it takes is one death or one incorrect decision, and that evens things right back on up here. And chat noting that uh, those are Nintendo's own NMB building blocks. As uh, there, uh, oh, now that's something that I didn't know that Odir is pointing out that uh, there was a lawsuit filed by the company that makes building blocks that look fairly similar to those that uh, went in favor of Nintendo. And Beast heading on to Macro Zone 2, which is going to be Tree Zone 4. Recognizable by the honeycomb shape, uh, almost the beehive type shape in the background. Rave now making his way through the long pipe over to the secret area. And the secret area ends up kind of being the shortcut in this case. Meanwhile, we've got Mario 3 in Macro 3 Zone. So Beast taking the less than ideal direction, as there's not really a wrong choice here, it's just depending on which way you go in Macro Zone, it could mean one extra level which Beast has taken and Rave Tuba took the other direction, although the auto-scroller could even things out, it's hard to say. The so Beast finishes up with Macro Zone 3 and is going to head to the boss level at just about the same time, and it looks to be Pumpkin 4. So it turns out that decision saving quite a few seconds here, and now both of our runners just a few seconds apart. Maybe about three seconds, I would say, the differential at the moment. So this is anybody's race here as we've hit the just past the 15 minute mark of this race here on the Super Mario Land 2 randomizer seasonal race here. One of, or the second of five that we have over the course of the next few days. And it looks as though the boss is going to be Tatanga. And both of them taking out Tatanga very quickly. So yeah, about a two-second differential now. So now both heading into Pumpkin Zone, and Pumpkin Zone 1 is going to be... the Space Secret Level. And they both finish almost simultaneously here. This is neck and neck. As they both head to Pumpkin Zone 2, which this time around is Pumpkin 3. It's a split level, so 
depending on which decision both of our runners make here, this could be crucial. with a little bit of a lead here and skipping on the midpoint bell. Interesting. Oh, as he fell into the spikes and takes a hit, goes small, gets the fire flower. Rave, meanwhile, dropping down and heading back up. So the traditional exit is going to lead to the secret. And we see that that was Macro 3. So if Rave Tuba ends up taking the secret exit, which he does not, so he is also going to get the unfortunate news in just a moment. Rave Tuba and Beast both heading out and going in a different direction here, and they're both, uh, well, now it looks like, yep, both going into Mario Zone 1, which this time around looks to be Pumpkin Secret 2. Changing things up just a bit. And Beast heading there. Now, Mario Zone, interesting in that it is the only zone that doesn't have any split levels or any dual exits. So they can just take care of the four levels, take care of the boss, and that's a quick and easy coin. Both of them now in... Tree Zone 1, which is representing Mario Zone 2 this race. And to answer the question in chat, I probably could, although uh, from what I was told, apparently there's uh, an echo or feedback when I get the music fed into me here, so uh, as much as I would like to, I don't know how, I don't want to necessarily be off, uh, off thing here. Oh, but Nori Acer telling me it was fixed, so if I bring up the music here, I won't be, uh, won't be in trouble here. Alright, I'm able to hear it a little bit. I'll keep it kind of quiet. And Mario's Zone 3. Well, that is going to be Mario 1 with the gears. Alright, let's see here. I... I'll have to wait for the chorus to come around again. How about that? <laughs> uh, Game Boy F9 noting I may be in trouble in other ways. Yeah, you know what? Maybe uh, maybe discretion should be the better part of Valor here. Game Boy F9 uh, making a very astute observation. I dare not get myself in trouble, uh, especially with the... Uh, other things looming on the horizon. We'll just leave it at that. So Beast making his way through Mario Zone 1, and the boss level for the Mario Zone is going to be Turtle Zone 3. The inside... Oh, yeah, the, the inside of... Uh, well, you, you can see it there. The, uh, the various... Uh, We'll keep it as, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep it uh, family friendly here. You can see what's going on there. And meanwhile, taking the secret exit and heading on to Pumpkin Zone 3 is Rave, which is going to be the hippo level.
So after things moving pretty swiftly for the first three coins, uh, now a little bit of a hiccup here, but Beast about to attempt to get coin number four, but he has to roast three little pigs to do so. Straw's out of the way, sticks out of the way, and Brick is toasted as well. And that is going to get Beast. Coin number four. Oh, wow. And the, uh, the upper exit for Hippo, not the one to go to. As Beast now heads over to Turtle Zone 1. And it is the Tree Secret Zone. Rave, meanwhile, floating on over to the end. Getting his bubble burst, literally and figuratively. And he's going to take the exit to head on to tree level 5. Meanwhile, Beast heading on over to the second turtle level, another split decision level, and it is going to be Space Zone 1. With the standard moon physics, so nothing out of the ordinary for them. Rave, meanwhile, hitting the midpoint. So for the moment, a bit of an advantage for Beast, but things certainly can turn around quickly as Beast is going up, up into the night sky. As the Pumpkin Zone boss is the witch. I ask it again, is this randomized? So Beast taking the secret exit, and it is the correct one. Meanwhile, Rave dispatching of the witch, and is going to get coin number four. As Beast now in macro... Zone 4. Rave, meanwhile, going to head back in and advance through the Mario Zone level. And we've got the Angry Mama Bird. Three quick jumps, and Beast is on his way to coin number 5. Twenty six oh eight. So one coin left, having to double back to the pumpkin zone. I was going to spend some coins. Oh, and the risk doesn't quite pay off there. As Rave now making his way through Turtle Zone 3, the boss level of Mario Zone. Oh, man, Beast doing about as well at the slot machine as I would at any... Uh, uh, establishment of gambling. 
But finally able to get a mushroom after a few tries here. But this does allow Rave to get a little bit closer back into here. And Rave's about to go after the pigs as well to get coin number five. Ooh, had a little trouble with the straw pig. Is able to fire spam the stick pig and the brick pig as well. And Rave is going to get coin number five. So now just one coin apiece for them. The pumpkin zone for Beast and the turtle zone for Rave. Beast making his way back through pumpkin zone three. Looking to get the correct split. And to do so, having to go up to the secret portion. Ooh. Rave, meanwhile, having a little trouble there with the, uh, with the turtle. And Beast taking the hippo. We know that the lower path is going to be the correct path. We'll see if Beast takes it. As Rave, meanwhile, finishing up with Tree Secret Zone. And now heads on into Space Zone 1, and Beast takes the upper path. That's going to take him over to the secret. So a soft reset and back into the zone and another ride in the bubble goes the beast. Dear noting in chat, this is close, and it most certainly is. Oh, but he takes the secret path in Turtle Zone. And we see that ends up being Tree 3 in the very brief moment before the soft reset. So Rave Tube is going to go back in and is going to take that upper path. Oh, and Beast taking a death. So going for it again here on Tree Zone 5. And to answer the question, uh, no, space, I uh, don't believe, is always moon physics, although I can certainly be corrected by those much more knowledgeable about the game here. But with the physics being randomized, that is one of the options in the Super Mario Land 2 randomizer, is that the physics, technically for any level, could be either the moon physics, the space physics, or normal physics. So Rave now taking the upper path. And that's going to get him onto Macro Zone 4. The final zone for Rave's final coin. But Beast is in the Witch level. And takes a trek to the left. Trek to the right. And another trek to the left. And the witch is done. Meanwhile, Rave 
handling Mama Bird. So this is still extremely close as Beast is going to get coin number six at 3208. But Rave making quick work of the Mama Bird and is going to get coin number six at 3221. Only about a 13 second differential. So now it's a matter of the door opening and both getting into Wario's castle. This could certainly go either way. One death inside Wario's castle could turn the tide for either of our racers here. So Beast enters the castle at 3246. 3252 for Rave. So only a six second differential because Beast had to go from a further location in Pumpkin Zone. And just like that, oh wow, Beast taking a death. Oh, and Rave taking one as well. And yes, Van, nothing like in a dramatic moment having the stars song in the background. Go figure. So Beast with a soft reset. Perhaps it was the commentator's curse noting that Wario's castle could be the equalizer. Another death for Beast and another quick, soft reset. But a death from Rave here could certainly turn things the other way. Rave navigating the moving platforms is Beast having struggles with that first room of Wario's castle. Meanwhile, Rave with some timely jumps heads on through the next pipe. A little bit more of a climb. Oh, and Beast getting hit by that fireball along the way and doesn't even bother with the one-up. You've already got 16 lives. Cat plus seven at this point. And Rave escaping those Dropping, I'm not even sure what those things are. They're, they're like they're like spinny thwomps, I suppose. But now Rave Tuba has made his way to Wario. And perched in the right position, stomping on the head three times. That's the first of three phases for Wario. Second one, oh, Wario's going to take flight. But now Beast may be only a matter of about 20 seconds behind, so if there's a misstep here by Rave in this final fight, Beast can certainly take it back. We have seen this in the past. Two stomps, three stomps, and Rave is going to take it, but not by much. This was close throughout, but Rave is going to take the ever-close victory. Get out your GGs, ladies and gentlemen, for Rave Tuba, who is going to finish with an official SRL time of 35 minutes and 49 seconds. And not too far behind him is Beast. And he is going to finish with an official time of 36.27. It's only a 38 second differential in the end. It was back and forth throughout. But Rave ultimately able to take it.
So I believe we're going to hear from both participants in a matter of moments here. Uh, this was back and forth throughout. You didn't know which way things were going to go. For a good portion of the race, it was... At least in the early going, it was Beast's lead, and then it pretty much evened out right at the third coin. And then Beast took another lead in coins four and five, but Wario's castle was the equalizer. This was going to be a good one, and uh, it certainly did not disappoint. And we have Rave and Beast here in the, in the Discord. Uh, great race for both of you. It was man, I'm I'm sweating just uh, just just watching it here. I mean, it was uh, back and forth throughout. Uh, it could have gone either way, and it was uh, just a 38 second differential between uh, between the uh, the victor and the runner up here. Oh, indeed. Uh, I think my only mistakes, besides the, the wrong exits in both wrong exits in Pumpkin, was not having the carrot for Pumpkin 2 and taking a death on the castle. But... Well, the uh, as I'm looking here, the uh, I mean the, the wrong exits in uh, in Pumpkin were equalized as uh, as both uh, made mm -hmm. the same. Both of you made the same choices. Uh, mm -hmm. As I'm looking here, the only differentials really in terms of those decisions it was uh one apiece in in uh pump well the macro one uh, rave made the uh, the correct choice uh, whereas in uh turtle zone two uh beast did so those pretty much those negated each other but otherwise you made the same decisions throughout uh early on beast had a lead at least for the better part of the first 12 to 15 minutes and uh, it was a catch-up point right around the 16-minute mark where both of you were actually two seconds apart in getting your third coins. Wow. Yeah, it was Just it, uh, it was a quick FYI. Uh, I, I think we can't hear Beast. He had some problems with his mic, and I still haven't heard from him since he joined. Yeah, I don't want to oh. talk when you are talking. Oh, sorry. You're, you're there. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Please. Uh, yeah, just uh, in, in looking at the the recap here, it's uh, yeah the the it was pretty much uh, similar across the board. It looked like the big challenge though, uh, as Beast had gathered a lead uh, a little bit later on, was uh, that first room of Wario's castle. Uh, yeah, talk talk a little bit about the, that if you would, Beast. Uh, yeah, I've always been bad at that room. <laughs> nothing to say much. Uh, nothing much to say, honestly. Mm -hmm. Was it, uh, I mean, again, my apologies with my uh, minimal familiarity, but was there anything different as far as the enemy structure that made it more challenging than usual for for either of your runners? Not really. Um, I'd say not particularly. Normally, um, having a lot of big flame can can throw me off, but but besides that, most, most bo those swinging balls, you can just go under them. And it, just taking it slow, basically. I, I took a death in that room, but it was maybe just, just because of stupid jump. But besides that, the first room doesn't really bring many surprises besides the, the physics. If the physics are different, then yes, certainly. Okay, so it's just challenging regardless, and then if the physics are off, then that just turns it from challenging to... Uh, to obscenities all over the place, pretty much. <laughs> yes, correct. Good to know. Well, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, what else uh, I was going to say. I mean, it, 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 as I said, it was pretty much back and forth. Uh, you know, Beast had a lead, and then and then Rave caught up, and then Beast took another lead. Rave caught up again, and mm -hmm. uh, ultimately that uh, that that first room in uh, in Wario's castle was the difference. But again, I mean, only a 38 oh. second difference. That's, uh, it, it, man, was it close. I really need to see it again. No, I'm very curious. <laughs> but, well, I guess it was, honestly, if I can say anything, the, the difference between Beast Mode and this 
is like day and night for sure. I've I've never felt like so comfortable just getting so lucky with power ups and and not having to bother with tricky jumps or or stalling or stopping for anything. Oh yeah, if you're used to playing beast mode and then you go to this, I could certainly see it being a uh, uh, a welcome, refreshing change mm -hmm. by comparison. Indeed. Alrighty. Well, uh, any other uh, any other final thoughts about the about the seed? Not for me. Uh, beast. Not for me, you go. No. Alrighty. Well, congratulations uh, to both. A, a great race uh, across the board. Uh, certainly great to watch. Uh, the the restream should certainly be uh, be thrilling to say the least. Uh, at, at looking at <laughs> looking at how close things were and how. Uh, how you know how how much of a horse race it essentially was. <laughs> so, looking uh, look, looking forward to uh, to checking that out. And also speaking of things to uh, to check out, well, coming up in about 15 minutes over on our sister station here, Randomania One is going to be the Super Mario Brothers Three Randomizer Weekly, followed at 10 p.m. Eastern by the Zelda Two Randomizer Max Rando. That should be uh, that should should certainly be interesting. It's almost like a a chaos mode for Zelda Two Randomizer. And uh, speaking of chaos mode, something I know a little bit about here. Uh, coming up tomorrow here among the Randomania networks, uh, starting at noon Eastern, we've got another one of our Zelda uh, excuse me Super Mario Land Two Randomizer League matchups. It's going to be Odeer against the Squirrel. Uh, then later in the afternoon and evening, it's going to be a replay of uh, one of the Dragon Warrior Randomizer Chaos Tournament semifinals. And then tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern, it's going to be the third place matchup in that Dragon Warrior Randomizer Chaos Tournament. That uh, should be a goodie. Uh, Angry Larry. I should know this. I've been calling uh, about 20-some uh, out of these matches here. Uh... I think because I've called so many, they're all kind of wrapping together in my head here. Uh, that's right. Tristel's moved on to the finals, and uh, and that'll be on Monday night. And I am drawing an absolute blank. This is this is what happens when a couple of hours of sleep kicks in. Is everything else just goes completely out the window as far as uh, as far as what I need here? It'll come to me in a second, I'm sure. But uh, oh yeah, uh, Tristel against uh, well, Tristel against High Spirits is the uh, the championship. That'll be. Uh, that'll be on Monday night, uh, but the third place race uh, that is going to be High Spirits and the Tie Dye Guy. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Or uh, or not High Spirits, the High Spirits and the Tie Dye Guy was one of the semifinals. It's going to be Angry Larry and the Tie Dye Guy. That's going to be tomorrow night at nine o'clock Eastern, and then coming up as I mentioned Monday night uh, at eight o'clock Eastern is the Dragon Warrior Randomizer Chaos Tournament Grand Finals, the Chaos Championship, and that's mm -hmm. going to be. Uh, Tristel against High Spirits. That should be a lot of fun as well. And then the remainder of our Super Mario Land 2 randomizer races for the week are going to come up on Tuesday the 17th. Uh, double header. First at 6 p.m. Eastern, it's going to be Typo against Yoko21. And then a little bit later that night at 8.30 Eastern, it'll be Slash against Lori D. Bunnykins. Uh, both of those should be a lot of fun as well. Uh, well, I want to thank our restreamer and tracker, Nori Astra, for helping keep me in line behind the scenes here. Make sure to give him a follow, as well as our two racers here, uh, Beast and Rave Tuba, and as well as myself, Ferran Burgundy, for everybody here uh, behind and in front of the scenes. Until next time, may your stars sing brightly and your seeds stay classy. Good night, everyone. Good night.